This is a look at the EBSCO databases and how they work. It can't cover everything, but this will be plenty to get you going. EBSCO is a collection of databases on many different topics. The most general is Academic Search Complete, with millions of articles on all topics, and there are also specialized databases about subjects such as education, American history, psychology, medicine, and more. You can choose one database to search, or search several at once by selecting more than one. Limit your selection to two or three, and do not try to just search all of the databases at once. It takes much too long. For this video, I will do example searches with a combination of Academic Search Complete and the Psychology and Behavioral Sciences collection. When I start my search, I see that I have three search boxes stacked together at the top of the page, and a lot of options underneath that. To start with, the only two we really need to worry about are these, full text and scholarly journals. You should always choose full text whenever you are searching for articles. This is because EBSCO does not only collect complete articles that you can read, it also collects citations, just the publication information about the article, and not the article itself. That is useful for some purposes, but for us, it's mostly just frustrating to find information about an article that looks good, but then be unable to actually read it. Note that if the citation does look really perfect, we can still get it for you. It will just take a little effort. Take a look at our video about interlibrary loan to find out more. For the most part, you will just want to save yourself some hassle and check this full text option. That tells the database to only bring you articles that you can read completely. The scholarly journals option may be useful to you if you are looking for those scholarly articles. Scholarly articles are written at a high academic level and are usually very narrowly focused. They represent research done by professional academics and are published in special journals. If you need to find scholarly articles, click this option, and the database will only bring those to you, without the newspaper and magazine articles. If you are not searching only for scholarly articles, leave that option blank, and you will get a mix of all types of resources in your results list. Let's start with a keyword search. One popular topic to research is drug abuse, so let's try that. I will simply type drug abuse into the top search bar and see what happens. As you can see, it immediately starts giving me suggestions, but for the moment I'm just going to stick with my basic search. And my results list contains about 65,000 articles. That's a lot, too many for me to deal with, but I have many tools I can use to narrow it down. Let's look around this page. First, I can see what type of resource each item is by looking at the icons next to each entry. The first several in this list are all scholarly articles, even though I didn't click that option. To the left of the screen, I have many more options. I already have full text checked, and I could also specify that I only want to see scholarly articles or articles with references, that is, footnotes that refer to other articles. Going a little further down, I could specify that I only want to see magazine or news articles. One of my most useful tools is this slidey bar that allows me to specify a range of dates. Some of these articles go all the way back to 1939, but for today, I think I will just look at resources written within the last 10 years. Once I select that on the bar, the results will automatically update. I now have about 28,000 articles, still far too many, but at least I know they're all recent. Going further down to the left, I could use these drop-down lists to select by language, geography, or other options. Now I have made my results list just a little shorter. There are more techniques I can use to focus my search, such as phrase searching and the terms and, or, and not. But because those are common to many databases, they are covered in the advanced database searching video and not here. For now, let's look at one article. I click on a title and now I can see all the information about the article. I can see the author and the journal that it was printed in. 
and just below that I can see terms that describe the topic of the article. These are useful to me because they might be better descriptors of what I'm looking for. It's a good idea to write them down to use in further searches. If I see some terms that look relevant to me, I can click on them and find more articles. Below that is the article abstract. An abstract is a summary of the article written by the author, and it's a great tool. Instead of going straight to the article and reading 10 pages before I decide whether or it's useful, I can read the abstract and make that decision right away. To the right, I have some handy tools. I can save this article to my Google Drive, or I can email it to myself. I would recommend that you always do this if the article looks like it might be useful. That way you have it, and you don't have to go search for it again. I can also produce a citation for my Works Cited or References page. Just click on the Cite button and scroll through the various options. APA is at the top and MLA is further down. Check it for accuracy, but it's usually fine and you can just copy the citation and paste it right into your list. Another important tool is permalink. The URL at the top of the page is the result of a search and it will not work again. So if I want to share this article with someone else, I need to copy the permalink and send that. I have two ways to read this article. In EBSCO, most articles are available in PDF format, which I access by clicking on the PDF link. It's a scan of the original article. To the right, I have the same tools, and to the left, there is a table of contents for the journal issue, which might be useful. I can also choose to download the PDF. Not all articles in EBSCO are available in plain HTML, but when they are, there are a couple of extra tools available. I can choose to have the article read aloud to me, and I can even choose between three accents. By looking at other settings, I can choose the speed and adjust other details. I can also translate the article into a wide selection of other languages. Knowing these basics about the EBSCO databases will allow you to find what you need more easily. Check the advanced database searching video for more information, and of course, if you have questions or need help, contact the library.